Selecting a general manager for a SmackDown has been somewhat of an arduous task. After all, we had to find someone that all of you respect. Someone with, a, with integrity, with character, with charisma. Someone with experience as well. And someone who is authoritative enough to make decisions and back it up. Here he is, your new general manager for SmackDown, Booker T. opportunity. Now you all know that Friday Night Smackdown is about to blow up. I guess you won't lose on hyperbole. So I say let's get this thing kicked off right now. The first thing that I'm going to do is WBCB presents Pro Wrestling Weekly. Tell me, he didn't just say that. Call in with a question or comment at 215-949-3232 or 888-922-2149. The tower of power, too sweet to be sour, funky like a monkey, holy yeah. And now, here's your host of Pro Wrestling Weekly, Ferran Derry. It doesn't matter what your name is. Hello and welcome to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Ferran Derry here with you, bringing you a little smidgen of the old school courtesy of our uh, fill-in producer for uh, Wild Bill Melody. we got to get a nickname for, uh, I guess, the uh, the self-professed Italian stallion himself, Gaetano Martini. I can take on any of them guys, you know? Absolutely. (laughs) There we go. Gate Martini, he's uh, he's filling in in the producer's chair and... uh, Kind of getting a, 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 a quick crash course on the, uh, the the flow of the show, and that's uh, that's partially my fault. It's what I get for waking up from a nap about 15 minutes ago and not uh, not kind of doing some sh- doing that kind of show prep, giving him uh, giving him kind of the lay of the land here. So it's okay, you know, like it's, you know, it's all right. I'll do it. You know, there you go. He's 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 doing things here. Certainly appreciating it. Uh, Bill Melody. Hopefully, he'll be back next week. But uh, we've got a ton of stuff to talk about. Raw episode 1001, not quite as dynamic as Raw episode 1000, and the ratings certainly showed that. And uh, insensitivity, that seemed to be the theme of the week, as in in two separate occasions, uh, somebody from WWE said something that they probably shouldn't have, and... uh, Ended up having to apologize for it. First, of course, on Raw, in case you missed it, WWE manager A.W. Well, he uh, issued an apology for a a joke that aired on Raw, of course, uh, coming out as the manager for Titus O'Neil's match. Uh, He referred to Titus O'Neil as being, quote, like Kobe Bryant in a hotel in Colorado. He's unstoppable. Of course, the comment referencing uh, Kobe's 2003 sexual assault case, which was eventually dropped. A.W., after the fact, on uh, Twitter, he said, I would like to apologize to all the WWE Universe for my inappropriate and insensitive remark. Uh, He goes on to say, I went too far with that joke. Hashtag not funny. Yeah, it it 
wasn't really funny and was just kind of, I guess, kind of tasteless and out there. And then not to be outdone, some roughly, uh, I guess, 12 to 15 hours later, Tensai. Of course, uh, you remember him as Albert from back in the day. He posted a tout video in between the Raw and SmackDown tapings. He noted that uh, his manager, Sakamoto, was driving him to the SmackDown taping and stated, quote, it's very, very dangerous to drive with a Japanese person. Open your eyes. Yeah, needless to say, a very insensitive, uh, we'll go with locationist, because I don't know if it's necessarily racist, but a locationist remark. Uh, or statement by Tensai. The tout video, of course, has been uh, taken down, and WWE officials have said in response to both of those statements that uh, appropriate action will be taken care of. So I'm going to do my best to make sure I don't say anything controversial that I have to apologize for, although I feel like I'm, I say something at least once a week that uh, gets out there. Okay, maybe not. Uh, other news, we've got the WWE financial reports for the second quarter. And uh, it's actually looking pretty good. I'll have more on that. The ratings, though, for uh, Raw, not nearly, as I said, as dynamic as uh, Raw 1000. Of course, uh, this week's Raw drawing a 3.08 rating, going back to normal, down from the 384 rating that uh, that Raw 1000 drew. So that's a pretty significant drop. Uh, The first hour of the show, under 3 at a 2.8, and then uh, it kind of went about back to normal, as opposed to last week's Raw, which... In the final hour, drew a dynamic 4.09 rating. So, I mean, that, that, that's numbers we haven't seen in over 10 years, at least for that one episode. But now it looks like it's back to normal. So all those fans that they brought for the one, uh, for the one ride didn't exactly keep them, although time will certainly tell. Anyway, we've got thoughts on a bunch of different things and a lot of people to get to them. So let's go ahead and uh, kick things off. Let's pull up Dan from Chicago, who's hey, been hanging on patiently. Yeah, he sure is. They're going to put him up right now, you know. I think he's on. Dan, welcome to Pro Wrestling Weekly. Uh, there we go. There he is. What's going on, Dan? Uh, not much. It's funny that you mentioned the Italian Stallion reference because I you know, your uh, producer helping out because I've been in the Rocky kick this week. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, I appreciate yeah, it. You know. that, that I laughed. <laughs> I've been watching like the, the, a couple of the old movies, and I saw the three the other day with Hogan, and that was funny. <laughs> Thunderlips. Yeah. Oh. In the flesh, baby. <laughs> He has Gate Martini, vocal imp- impressionist extraordinaire, as well as uh, he, he does quite a bit here for the station. He got the uh, the doo wop hour. I'll, I'll give you a quick shameless plug. I appreciate you. The the, uh, the doo wop hour Thursdays uh, one is that, is that yeah, I believe one to two one to two yeah. and then uh, of course the Italian American hour which uh, is here on Saturday mornings from seven thirty to eight thirty following uh, my chart toppers preview and. Yep. Gate will be filling in for Bill Meldy on the Country Music Hall uh, right after this show. He'll be doing country music, and uh, he'll also be filling in first thing tomorrow morning when it's way too early at uh, 5 a.m. Oh, yeah. And there's something strange about Italians and country music like a don't mix, you know. <laughs> No, I'm trying to tell you. Uh, it's hey, I'm going sh- to shut up now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Gabe Martini, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, damn, what's, uh, <laughs> let's, let's get back to the wrestling here. I don't know how that. Well, happy belated birthday first off. Oh, thank my, you. My birthday was Wednesday as well. Oh, well, happy belated birthday to you as well. well. We'll exchange the belated birthday wishes. Right. Um, uh, wrestling, TNA, uh, was really good last night. I liked our Thursday night. I liked the in- intrigue with the Aces of Eight. I like where they're going with it. It's really good. Even though it does kind of remind me of Sting and the NWO. Back in the A day. little bit. And I think uh, the only thing that gets me with it is, I don't know, it, is James Storm over enough with the fans to be able to take yet another question of his his legitimacy and credibility I mean, we saw this when he essentially went home and kind of pulled the lost his smile type thing uh, after losing the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. So now here we are a few months later, and now people are questioning his loyalty uh, as as far as being a a good guy, as to whether or not he's the leader of this Aces and Eights group. And I don't know. I I think... uh, I, I don't know if his character is popular enough that it can continue to take these hits to his credibility and have him still be as popular as he was. I think that what they should have done was got that AJ Styles storyline and him be the focal point of this. 
Oh, AJ. Well, that would make sense, but uh, they, for whatever reason, they can't seem to get <laughs> they can't seem to get Claire out of their minds. I guess they just uh, they, the, the storyline that I think everybody wants to end, except TNA management. Horrible. <laughs> it's not good. That's basically the only really bad thing I have to say about TNA at this point is that storyline. It's kind of dragging them down a little bit. I mean, Hardcore Justice so far is looking uh, pretty good. That's, uh, of course, a week from tomorrow. And I've got the lineup for that. Next week I'll have the uh, predictions certain to go wrong for uh, whatever other matches they'll, uh, they'll add on to it. But it looks like they, they, I mean, they've already got seven, and they look to be seven pretty good ones, which is not something I've been able to say for TNA for a while. Right, right. We saw one of the aces of eight on, on camera, and you, you, you know that, right? Yeah, I, you know, you know, you know how I am about you know any kind of like spoilers or giving away any well, kind of. It's not a spoiler, but you can actually tell by his hair. <laughs> well, okay, yeah. If they do a horrible job of masking, I guess you know what. What can you I do necessarily? You know, with the ponytail. Mm -hmm. you, you can totally see it. I didn't even didn't read it. I went to my wife. I'm like. That's what, I haven't really read anything about it either because I'm one of these surprised as well. But, yeah, I'm like, that's one of them. And I think, uh, actually, Garrett Bischoff is one of them as well. Hmm. Which is interesting because he said that he would be at ringside for that, yep. uh... Uh, for the Storm Angle match. And, uh, of course, you know, the, no sign, yeah. At least no sign during the match. Right. Interesting. Yeah, I guess you can't really mistake that ponytail, can you? Yeah, that's why. But you know what? They needed to do a better job with that. <laughs> hmm. They're going under the Andy Reid philosophy, apparently. <laughs> oh, local humor. Yes, yeah. yes, good good times. Uh, we're, we're closing in on football season, actually. Yeah, Eagles preseason this Thursday. I'm Eagles more worried about, I'm, since you brought that up, I'm more worried about the baseball with Cliff Lee. Any word on that with you guys? Uh, it looks like, well, the last that I heard, he's, um, I think the Dodgers were trying to claim him off of waivers, but they're trying to work out, like, the logistics of a deal, and if it isn't done by tomorrow, they're, that's well, probably going to be off the table. That's why I'm <laughs> I don't know. I don't think it's going to be like uh, Blanton, where he was scheduled to start last night, and they ended up having to spot start Kendrick. Yeah. Wow, we've gone baseball, football, we wrestling. We're just all over the place today. <laughs> Sleep deprivation is a wonderful day. A little boxing in there as well, courtesy of uh, courtesy of Gate Martini. I don't know what else do we got. It's, we've already got kind of the, the grand slam going here. Uh, we got any any off season hockey talk going there, eh? Although speaking speaking of Canadian accents, actually, here's a programming note for you. Two weeks from now. Uh, I will not be here live in studio, but I will still have a show. I'll kind of put it together in the can uh, before I head to see some relatives uh, north of the border. So uh, there will still be a show. It will actually feature a couple of interviews uh, never before heard, and I still have to put those together. Uh, I mean, they're, they're together. They just have to you know clean, clean up a little bit. But uh, with the Nasty Boys, who I spoke with a few weeks ago, and uh, going back a little ways the total package Lex Luger. So that'll be all oh, coming cool. up in That's two weeks. Cool. Huh? Good, good, good. You've been promoting the Luger thing. I kind of want to hear that as well. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll admit it's not, you know, it's 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 definitely not award-winning interview, and I'll admit that uh, the, the, the fan in me definitely came out during the interview, but, I mean, he, he was, you know, he was one of those guys. And, I mean, you'll hear it in the interview. I mean, he, when I was, I guess, 12, 13 years old, that was like when the Lex Express and all that was going on. I was right on board with it. I was wearing red, white, and blue all, you know, through 12, 13 years old, riding that thing all the way to SummerSlam 93. It was a great memory. You know, I was gracious that Luger was able to give me, you know, 10, 12 minutes of his time just to, uh, just to talk a little bit and me trying to formulate questions because, you know, when you meet somebody who's like your, you know, kind of childhood hero, I mean, you, you have like a thousand questions running through your mind and, you know, when the tape's rolling, it's hard to think of these things. Yep. You know, it's hard for me to think of these things when I have notes sitting in front of me, let alone just going cold off the cuff. So it'll, it'll be interesting. I mean, you know, my interviews are always interesting to say the least. I mean, you remember the, the Jim Cornette interview where uh, that was... If I was any any greener, well, I'll, I'll just I, won't, I don't think I'll follow up with that line. 
Again, that's where I don't want to say anything Tensai or AW controversial like. I didn't even hear that. Did they edit that? I don't remember anything like that. What, from this past week? No, did they edit it? Yeah, from Monday, because all of a sudden I hear Michael Cole apologizing after that match. I'm like, what did he say that was bad? Uh, it, was, it was while he was just kind of spouting off on the live mic, kind of doing, doing his thing now the way that Jimmy Hart used to use the megaphone back in the day. Yeah. Only now it's clear enough that everybody can hear it. Mm-hmm. So he just he just he stepped over the line. You know, he made a he, he made a Kobe Bryant rape joke. Right, right, right. Oops. Like so, but Raw was just god awful. It was horrible. I don't know how they're gonna be able to fit all three hours like this every week. If Impact was smart, and they're gonna continue to do this. Like let's say you know how they joke and say, "Oh, this is our season finale." Well, you know what? Every month. After a pay per view, do a special on a Monday. Because I guarantee you, I would switch over to over to Impact. Do one special a month where you have it right after the pay per view. Because why wait till Thursday? You can do why wait till Thursday for the news? A special Impact Monday. You know what I mean? They can do it. Hmm. I guarantee you, people will switch. Just to kind of just, just to kind of let WWE know, hey, you better step up your game because yeah. we're coming. Yeah, exactly. Not all the time. Just every now and then after a pay-per-view. Just following a pay-per-view. So, I mean, for if they were to do that, for example, April 13th, or April, August 13th, that's where we're at this month, right after Hardcore Justice, right. that Monday would be the perfect time to... Uh, but in this case, you'd be going against the go-home show for SummerSlam. Okay. Well, so uh, that's the problem. I mean, you got you'd have to like you have to find a way to tweak it because I mean, all right, even though it, it's it's still you know, even though it's three hours, it's still WWE. It's still the Raw before one of their bigger pay per views guess, of the year. It's just so boring lately. It's like, gosh, every week it's the same same stuff. I'm not, I'm still gonna watch it because you never know something good could come out of it. But still, what, like Daniel like, Bryan kicking little Jimmy. That was horrible. <laughs> that was ridiculous. Yeah, I tried. I tried. You know, I was trying to find the. It's another one of um, that was one of those attempted comedy things that I even chuckled at. I did, but I'm I'm sick of Vicky Guerrero doing the Lane Bennett dance. It's so stupid. Wow, her her talk about somebody's stock falling. I mean, she she went from being one of the most hated heels to kind of just. Meh, nah, nah, boo, or whatever. Yeah. And Jericho's now a baby face? Really? It's because he's fighting Dolph Ziggler? Ziggler, why can't he still be a heel when he fights Ziggler? After they did the attitude error. Well, there were a lot of things that were done that don't necessarily make right. sense, and, uh,. Oh wow! Look at the uh, look at the time. I gotta get. Uh, I'm up against a break. Thanks. Uh, thanks so much for the call, Dan. I gotta get yep. rolling. Uh, yeah. There's. Uh, yeah. There's. Uh, there, there's. There's a lot of. There, there's a lot of things that still need to be fixed. I mean, we obviously some things have been tweaked both on Raw and Impact. Not everything's perfect, but what do you expect? Anyway, coming up on the other side, we got more of your calls. We also have. Uh, of course, well, tonight is the uh, the UWF show, and I'll uh, talk a little bit more about that on the other side. But uh, I've got, uh, in separate segments, I've got both individuals of, uh, well, two out of the three individuals in the main event. Uh, Madman Moose Moretti, of course, we had him on for a little bit last week, and uh, Too Tough Tony Hightower. We'll talk a little bit with them about uh, the UWF main event that's going on uh, at Eagles Hall. That's, of course, tonight at 7.30, and I'll be in the house doing the in-ring announcing so come check out some action and uh if you want to put a uh, a face to the voice as you've heard for all these years you can certainly do so and that's uh at 920 trenton road in fairless hills i'll have more details for you on the other side this is pro wrestling weekly here on 1490 wbcb and online at wbcb1490.com